Okay, this is Tim at the IWC, courtesy of Pond Megastore. We're looking at Isabel Pring, and we're going to get some commentary telling you a little bit about the history by Mr. Patrick Nutt. Could you go ahead and tell us about it, Pat? Okay. Isabel Pring, as far as I know, was first, um, first flowered at St. Louis Botanical Gardens in 1941. Prings, this is Pring's personal description. Isabel Pring, and of course it was named after his daughter, who was also Mrs. R.J. Seibert. Says flowers similar to Mrs. G.H. Pring, but fuller and more rounded. Fragrant, buds light green, leaves very large, light green above, fleck reddish below, reddish brown below, but this fading with age. Strongly viviparous or gemniverous. Now, I don't completely agree with that in our experience just because it uh, sometimes it'll throw piggybacks, sometimes not. But we still have it here in flower this year. Um, when Mrs. Seibert, of course, was here as wife of the director, it was, it was a must that we had it on display. I'm hoping that, you know, that fits you the description of your plant that's flowering right now. Yeah, it does. It's to the T. In fact, we've discussed the fact that um, there's a lot of times last year we were trying to get uh, pups off this thing because he's only got like one or two tubers left and they would have something and look like they're starting, but then it would just disintegrate. It was very weak viviparity. It sounds familiar to another lily which you may or may not have, which I, I used to grow when Pring was alive. That was Aviator Pring. Um, but there were different clones of that, and I eventually got a good clone. I'm not sure whether Tim Jennings still has it, but it was named after his son, who was a B-17 pilot who lost his life in a accident so you know it was important for us to have that okay well that's great i'm gonna we have aviator hit uh stop on this one